have been asked to explain the grotto story. And again, as the person in the second day of the third week, strikes me as a wee bit presumptuous as I look at Father Francis. But I don't know how many of you know the story of the grotto. So I will uh, very briefly. The grotto was built in the early 1920s by the Franciscans, particularly seminarians. It was the inspiration of Father Walter Hammond. Construction began in 1922. It was concluded in 1925. Once upon a time where we stand, there was a swamp. The friars decided to drain that swamp. They gathered rocks from around campus and they built the largest freestanding shrine on campus. An interesting little historical footnote, and I suspect some of the friars know this, I'm not sure how many others do, and I was trying to figure out which ones they are, but the top five stones in the arch were brought back from Lourdes by Father Thomas Plasman. So they are actually from Lourdes. Interestingly enough, the apparition of Our Lady at Lourdes occurred in 1858, which was the year St. Bonaventure was founded. Hence, to have a grotto in her honor, the grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes, is completely fitting. The football team, once I'm told, prayed here before games. Apparently, without a great deal of success, because we don't have a football team anymore. <laughs> but perhaps that's a comment only somebody in the second day of their third week would, would dare to make. More importantly, a, a, a grotto, a shrine like this, is important because it is an overt statement of the institution's continued deepening commitment to its values and beliefs. Uh, in another life at another institution, I restored a chapel, and when the bishop asked me why would I do that, I said I needed to make, or I wanted to make, a dramatic statement to the community, um, a witness statement, if you will, that this institution was still a Catholic institution and it still was rooted in its founding values. To a certain extent, the generosity and work of people like Ray D and Marv Stocker and all the other donors are a recommitment of that founding mission. And that commitment to mission is absolutely critical. As I've said on a number of occasions, if you're going to study marketing or X, why would you come to St. Bonaventure when you can go to any state school for a third of the cost? The only reason, the only legitimate answer to that question is, you come to a place like St. Bonaventure because it is faithful to its mission, and in its faithfulness to its mission, it determines that it will satisfy and serve the student, uh, that student's entirety. Values-based institutions like St. Bonaventure are absolutely critical. More importantly, however, the faithfulness to mission is important because another person actually found their calling in this very grotto. And I would scarcely compare myself to Thomas Merton, but if you looked on the bookshelves in my den at home, curiously enough, you'd find almost a complete set of his works, the most thumbed one being his collection of poems, Raids on the Unspeakable. And so while I was preparing my remarks for this morning, it was immensely humbling to know that it was actually in this very grotto that Thomas Merton felt his calling to the monastery. And I think that is relevant because this grotto stands for the university's commitment to its founding mission and its determination that it will be faithful to that mission into the future. So I thank again all of the benefactors who made this possible, and I thank all of you for coming today. I'm uh, meant, I think, to talk a little bit about historic preservation on the uh, Bonaventure campus, but uh, I'm going to stray a little bit into talking about people. Uh, this, uh, as uh, Dr. Roth uh, said, is, uh, was built in 1925. Thomas Plasman was president. Thomas Plasman brought back the, the stones are the five ones, in the uh, lighter colored ones in the uh, shape of a flower, perhaps, above the statue there. Uh, and uh, there is a wonderful picture on our archives website of uh, people uh, uh, posing in front of the uh, in front of this structure uh, as it is uh, under construction there are some workers there's a fellow who looks like but is not I decided father Tom uh, and uh, there are a bunch of young people who must be students or seminarians somewhat overdressed for a project like this and there is a horse and a fedora whose name is lost to history I'm afraid uh, but uh, these are people. They built this thing, and we have kept it. We have tried our best 
not to disturb this thing or to undo it or do it over again in any, any sense except to uh, make it more welcoming. I didn't uh, have known to expect such a large crowd. I'm going to ask to pass this picture around. Again, it's on our website. Our website. And uh, this is uh, Jared Smith, who's our construction manager, who is closer than I am to having done this project. But uh, he's going to start that, uh, that picture around. At the other end of the spectrum, uh, our facility staff today ha are really pleased about this. Um, uh, this was done by contractors, uh, not necessarily by our own, not by our own grounds crew. Uh, but uh, for years, uh, they have uh, sort of lamented the inability to do something for the grotto. You know, it takes some money. It takes a lot of money to do something like this. And we've been unwilling to touch it. Uh, and not do it right, and then finally, because of the generous gifts that have been mentioned, we have been able to go after this and do it right. We got help from uh, uh, Dirk and Edson, uh, landscape architects, who uh, drew the plans, uh, Duggan and Duggan, uh, general contractors, uh, 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 Peterson Landscaping, and uh, Greg Steer Electric for the lighting, uh, did uh, uh, most of the work here. Uh, and uh, and we have been able to uh, to take it over and to start uh, start managing it now, and we are very very pleased about that. I wanted I mentioned historic preservation, and besides the grotto itself, which we uh, are still uh, um, working on some restoration of the stonework, but we are trying our hardest not to make it look like we've done that, uh, and we have not uh, and we have not we are going to do the uh, the lightest touch that we can. There are some other things here though. Um, the benches over there, which are a particular idea of the class of 2015, and which are intended more or less to be used, or, or thought of as being a place where you can sit on for a ceremony, evidently, but uh, also um, uh, it, where you can sit on for a class. Not in a day like today, maybe we have many more. On a day like today, uh, it would be a nice place to have a class. So those benches and the plinth on which I'm standing, which is for uh, you know use of a temporary altar are actually the front steps, the old front steps of Butler Gymnasium. We had to rebuild them because of um, uh, structural deficiencies some years ago. We saved the stones, we saved things, and we hope to be able to reuse them again. And this is one uh, uh, important example of that, uh, from the front steps of uh, the Doyle Hall Chapel. And uh, they had to be um, removed in a project to update it so that it would be handicapped accessible. So uh, we, need, we, we are proud to be able to do that, but we saved the stones and we were able to uh, make them into those steps. So this is uh, meant to be a, uh, a continuation of the history of St. Bonaventure University in stone and gravel uh, on this location. Handicapped accessibility, by the way, is provided here by this other walk, which doesn't, uh, is not nearly so steep. We had to uh, remove a couple of trees in the back. Some of you will know their replacements have been planted. Uh, they were in uh, deteriorating condition and a hazard, so we uh, kind of closed the place in and made it dark and dank. So we had to do that, but that was all part of the landscape design, which I think has been successful in general all the way around. Uh, I want to call attention to uh, into a couple of individual gifts. We have a couple of gifts in kind. Uh, and the two that I can think of right now are birdhouses. Uh, and one is a, a bluebird house over here on the edge of the, uh, of the open opening. And there's a red house over there uh, if back in the woods. Uh, so those are, those are also gifts. And we think they're in keeping uh, with the general program here. We also have had visits by wildlife in the form of deer who like to eat the hostas. And we're going to work on that particular uh, issue as we go forward. So once again, on behalf of the people who work here, the, uh, the uh, St. Bonaventure grounds crew and the other facility staff mm -hmm. and the contractors, uh, people who worked on this very, with great pride, I thank you, the donors, for this renovation. Special prayer from St. Francis to Mary. A salutation to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail, O Lady, Holy Queen, Mary, Holy Mother of God.
virtues which are poured into the hearts of the faithful through the grace and enlightenment of the Holy Spirit that from being unbelievers you may make them faithful 